And we are back to discuss what everyone's been waiting for, our review of Westworld. Preston, how are you enjoying <laughs> oh, no. Westworld? Uh, Westworld, season, uh, episode three was a lot better than episodes one and two, but man, it's still just so boring. It got and, better and because Bernard showed up. It did get better because Bernard show, showed up and there were there was a few like twists and turns in the episode. But for the most part, we still kind of know where everything is going. Like, you know, it's like very clear that about the flies and what they were used for. And um, it's too bad, like his daughter's head opening up was spoiled in the trailer. So we kind of knew that. Like, um, so it was it was a lot better because of Bernard. And and what the hell is Stubbs doing? Like all for years. I don't know. Was it just like <laughs> hanging just out in the room doing hang, nothing? Hanging out around, you know, just chilling, doing nothing, you know? Yeah. Do you know do, was it just lucky that he was in the room or or is he just like sitting in the room the whole time? I think he was just know? sitting Maybe he checks in on him every now and then, who knows? <sighs> I guess. I guess they don't get bored, so they can just do whatever they want, right? <laughs> I, I like I like how the the plot for Bernard is. He did the uh, Doctor Strange plot uh, towards the end of Infinity oh, War. Oh, everybody! Like my wife was actually like, my my wife can't be bothered with this season, and and she was like resting in like in the cor like in the corner, like uh, well, she was on the couch, but like uh, resting like away from me, and she she was like listening, and she's just like, are are, are they doing Endgame? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it seems to be, I think, uh, yeah, I think it was the same thing. Okay, you made that joke. I can take off half of what's supposed to happen. Okay, that's interesting. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. But he kind of spoils it because we know he dies now. He's, there's no, right. There, every single path, he dies. So, yeah, that's too bad. You know, um, it's too bad. Though it was, you know, it was, I, I think the, the montage of him, like, um, going through his house with, with, with Charlie and everything was done really well. And um, uh, I, I liked it a lot. Um, the episode was, was all right. Yeah. I mean, even, even the wet, like when they finally make it to new Westworld and like seeing, seeing sweet water again, was kind of, was kind of fun. And, and them going downstairs and um, having the whole plot of Westworld seasons one and two be, be actually a storyline in right. in Westworld is kind of funny, you know. I, it was a much much like ugh, episode three was just so much better than the previous two episodes. But in fact, I almost feel like they should have started plot wise, like writing wise, with episode three and just screwed the other stuff. You what know? they should have done is what they did with, with Raised by Wolves and The Boys to some extent, which was released the first three episodes the same day. Mm. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because uh, yeah, because yeah. because it took it took that long to get into something interesting. Huh. Speaking of taking that long to get into something interesting, let's get into the prologue. By the way, guys, okay. you finally got your Westworld discussion. I'll put this on the Clips <laughs> channel. You finally got it. Everyone's been bitching, but uh, no. So you did your prologue um, yeah. with uh, Maester John, and uh, I have to say, not my yeah. favorite. But that's because I'm what? not I'm not invested yeah. in John as much as I am into wanting to know what happens with uh, Sansa, with Jamie, it's, it, Cersei. It does make prologues. It does make prologues incredibly difficult. I remember the first time cracking open um, a Dance with Dragons and just thinking, "Who the fuck is this and why should I care?" And I remember feeling the same thing with the prologue of Feast for Crows. Like, at least with the prologue for A Storm of Swords, like Sam is in the prologue, mm -hmm. so you're kind of like, "Oh, right." And, and and it's about the others, so you're like very engaged in that prologue. But um, I do remember like by like later, I love the A Feast for Crows prologue, especially and and the um and I do love I do like the uh, A Dance with Dragons prologue. It's 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 okay. You like it because the, it all comes together when everything's said and done, right? Like you eventually, you know, eventually the themes like eventually you figure out that that uh, about the faceless men and 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 Sorella Sand and stuff like that. And it becomes, you know, much more, much better. Like how many things are hidden in that? Um, uh, a Dance with Dragons prologue is more thematic, right? Like the second life and stuff and, and how it relates to how, like everything Varamir is doing doesn't really, like, it doesn't really matter for him. It matters for Bran and John, right? right. You know? And so, mm -hmm. um, so it, yeah, it, those prologues get better on rereads and, 
and the thematics and everything thematic but um uh yeah so it's tough because it's a new character that you don't you don't really care about so i'm not saying it's bad so, it's just I, I i really want to get back to jamie I'm, I'm very curious to see what you have in store for jamie um you were having a conversation with someone in my server a while back and hmm. i love how you both because i've been thinking about this the whole time i love how you both made the same uh come, came to the same conclusion in regards to the george Mar george r martin's winds of winter that you guys are going to be 30 chapters into this, full steam ahead, and then this asshole announces Winds of Winter. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, and I get that. I mean, like, at, the, at our rate, we can do, like, whatever, 12, 12 a year, 12 chapters a year. It'll take a while, you know? Like, and so it could easily be that we're, like, two or three years in, and, like, George somehow squeaks out Winds of Winter. I get it. That's but okay, though, because still, the moment he puts fun, out Winds you know? of Winter, the moment he announces yeah. it, you can begin working on A Dream of Spring. There you go, huh? That's true. That, That's there, true. That, he's not putting that one out. <laughs> I say this as I cry. Uh, <laughs> I weep. Um, okay, so let's get on to some of the Q&As. Now, I have uh, a question myself that mm. some people have I've seen also ask privately and sometimes, you know, in the, on the live stream. Um, will you be putting details? <laughs> Will you be putting detailed sex scenes in your fanfic? Uh, I mean, if it if it suits, um, you know, if it suits the story. I'm I won't ask sure you even... to out any yeah. of the writers who are like pervy weirdos who are like writing sex scenes for every chapter. Do, do you have one guy that does that though? Uh, there were definitely some some <laughs> submissions that had more explicit like sex scenes uh, between <laughs> between John Naleros. Um I mean this there you know there was a somewhat of a, a a sex scene in this it wasn't as as detailed as Sam on the ship or um Asha with Carl the maid I think what but, I'm asking um, is are we going to get insane gems like fat pink mast and pink cunt mast. was the world <sighs> Maybe maybe if it's funny, I don't know. Maybe if it suits, we have to have to come to that moment and think think about it. You know. Um, well, since Sam is your favorite character, I would assume you'd put all the sex scenes with him. No one else has sex scenes. <laughs> the rest of the story, it's all Sam getting laid all the time. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I guess there's some, definitely some weird. Some weird sex stuff all, all through the series. I mean, like John being good at cunnilingus or Tyrion, like of like vomiting and then having sex with a with a with a sex worker immediately after vomiting and 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 a lot of weird stuff. You know weird, that? weird yeah. stuff, you know, or you know, Cersei like pretending to be Robert and like raping Tysha or like Danny's like weird um uh lesbian experience and I mean there 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 there's a bit of it, right? Uh so, you know, I did. We did what we could. We put in a we, we put in a weird a weird sexual scene, um, and you know it was a little. I don't know if it was too vulgar, but you know, there's definitely the metaphor like he like John melted, and it's like well that's you know him him like creaming his pants. You know, of course, that's of him. course. That's that. Yeah, so. <laughs> sure, why not? Um, all right, let's get to the the, the other cues. Um, uh, this one person asks, uh, are the White Ravens all being taught the same secret code just so they can be kept together in the West Tower? Because it seems worthwhile to keep some separated so they could be taught personalized message from Theobald to maesters in key positions. I mean, I, um, I think the idea would be that, and, and I haven't thought about it in too much detail, but, but the idea is that you, if you, if you wanted to send a, a, a raven to a single raven with a single message to a single maester you could um you just have to separate it and then i think if you're if you're sending a message to everybody like you can that that happens to be in your crew you might as well like teach all of them in in mass um so i think both are possible i think the idea is that this was a this was was a theobald message in mass and anybody that knows the code of ravens would be able to to um the language of ravens would be able to um understand um you know it's sort of a general thing but yeah i i think if if you have a specific message for a specific raven for a specific maester you can put soot on your on your raven and and send it you know under the guise of uh 
of a black raven and send a message to somebody uh, clandestinely. Um, and if you wanted to do, you know, a, 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 a mass email, I guess it's just like email, right? You can send an individual email, you can send a mass email, you know? So that's the idea with the ravens. Like, um, this, this is, this is a, like the, the hidden code is like the, you know, the, 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 cause there's, there's two messages in the Raven, obviously, right? There's the, there's what it's speaking, the beware John message. And then there's the Daenerys dragons message. But I think the Daenerys dragons message, um, is like a, an official conclave, um, you know, message that he's, uh, they're sending out to all maesters on the team that have, uh, learned the speech of ravens next question is john vance is one of the most detailed and enjoyable characters original to this project what was it like constructing him did he change a lot over various submissions or was there always a core character concept that endured throughout um he did change quite a bit i would say that most uh submissions had him be much more to be he have him be nicer and to be more of a protagonist, um, I always kind of had in my mind that he was going to be an arrogant douche to some to, to some degree to make, you know, thinking that he was better than everybody else. So like him being an arrogant douche, um, you know, is it was, was, you know, kind of my my, um, you know, addition. There were a few that kind of hinted at that, um, but I, I definitely like shifted the the discussions I got from different people, you know. Um, and it was also very subtle. There's some subtle stuff as well. For instance, like Maester Amory in a lot of submissions is, is a jerk, but I actually made him like kind of a nice guy, but like John perceives him as a jerk, you know, <laughs> like, and if it's like really subtle, like there's, you know, there's not, you know, too much wrong with Maester Amory, except for the fact that like John doesn't, doesn't really like him cause he's, cause he's not, he's not that intellectual. Um, so, but I think that's what makes John even more, more relatable is that he's flawed. Like, you know, that he's, um, he, that he doesn't like certain people around him and has opinions and that he's so insecure and, and, and in love with, with Alaros and things like that. So, um, you know, I hope that came out in, in, in making the character, but, but it was, it was mainly just because when I look at the other prologue, uh, characters, they're so flawed that I needed to, I wanted him to be flawed, you know, um, I didn't want him to be a nice guy <laughs> and, and, you know, or, or, or a perfect great guy in any way. Cause, cause a lot of people, I, I think one of also one of the reasons that he was, um, positive with a lot of the submissions is that he was a Vance and the Vance's supported Rob and therefore like the, the Riverlanders should be good guys. And so, you know, I kind of kind of shifted that around. I was like, yeah, we can't, you know, can't have him just be be this uh, be this protagonist. You know, he's got to he's got to have a a dark side. He's got to have something unique to him, you know. So that's that's but he did he did shift and change. But, you know, I would say that most of the submissions had him being a little more positive and and I made him uh, I made him into a jerk, <laughs> though, though a relatable jerk and a jerk that we like pity and like sympathize with, you know, so hopefully that came through. Next question is, uh, what's the situation with the Krakel marriage proposal to Jane? Uh, yeah, I, um, in the end, I, I think there were, there, there are a lot of submissions. Obviously when I, when I did the, um, the, uh, the summary, like mentioning the thing with Krakel, um, was, was part of it. And a lot of the submissions did include the stuff about Craig Hall. I think it just for time, I kept it out at time and complexity. I te I kept the whole thing out. It doesn't mean that like Jane can't be still, um, betrothed to a Craig Hall. Uh, I just, I just timing wise and like placement of, of where like the mention of it would be. I kept it out because the, the chapter was getting long and it was rather complicated and there's a lot of stuff going on. So I, I, I that so we you know we certainly could have had it, but then I also I also had the line in there like John wondered why um, Jane wasn't the one getting getting married to Case, and I, I actually kind of like liked so it, that was from one of the submissions and I kind of liked that line because it, it refers to Jamie and everything 
that he was doing, but at the same time, it doesn't like, um, it's not like explicit, you know? And, and by force, by, by putting in there like out loud to everyone that, that, oh, Jane is getting married to a Craig Hall. Um, it kind of, uh, it, it would, it would kind of spoil that line. So it was mostly about that. It's not that Jane can't be, um, and, and we can't go forward with her being connected to the Craig Halls, but, um, you know, I just kept it, kept it out on this one. Um, and if, if, if we decide later that it doesn't make sense for her to be at the Craig Halls or whatever, uh, um, then we, we don't need it to be, but, uh, yeah, that, but that was, that was it. It's just, it was just kind of an organic thing. Like, uh, eh, it's not fitting the, the conversation is flowing a certain way. It doesn't really fit. Um, I kind of liked this line referring to, to J the Jamie story and, you know, if we if we want it in later, we can have it. If we don't want it in later, we don't we don't have to. So that was it. It was just kind of a organic kind of exclusion. That's all. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, this one here, I'm sure this will be your favorite question. Uh, mm. If Sam was aware of Bowen Marsh's conspiracy, presumably through the use of a glass candle, mm. why not simply warn John using that same glass candle? And if glass candle messages couldn't reach John, how could a glass candle be used for eavesdropping? I mean, I think the idea is that that Sam is just discovering how to use the glass candle. So the glass candle has two different functions, uh, according to to Maester um, Marwin, Archmaester Marwin. He, you can look you can look across space, but you can also go into people's dreams. And so the idea is that Sam is currently able to look across. Um, uh, space and kind of see things externally, but he's not yet able to go into people's dreams. Gotcha. Uh, will Sam be able to use the glass candle to uh, maybe communicate with John as he's dying or? He could if he wanted. I mean, I, we'll have to wait until the Sam chapter to see like how far and what, what Sam's been doing. Um, you know, I think for the most part, Sam is, is, you know, trying to look around the world, trying to figure out where Gilly is and, and, you know, maybe checks back up on John and kind of sees the situation there. And it's like, oh crap, I've got to, got to reach out to John, but is unable to do it. I mean, you know, if he was talented enough to enter, to enter John's dreams, um, you know, perhaps he should have, but you know, he, I guess he wasn't. Um, maybe we'll have to have that in the, uh, the, uh, the Sam, uh, the Sam chapter about like, you know, him learning to handle the glass candle and, and figure the whole thing out. I'm genuinely surprised you haven't like done a Sam chapter yet. Cause Sam, Samuel, Samuel Tarly is your favorite character. So, but you're, uh, you're slowly getting there. Um, I, I mean, I'm not sure Sam Tarly is my favorite character, but, uh, you said that. Well, well, besides, well, I'm sorry. Besides, I think it, I think it's the chapter I'm most looking forward to. Right. I'm sorry. Sam. That's what I meant. Besides, from, from, uh, from Sweet yeah, right. And, and like, the char the chapter most looking forward to from George is not necessarily the chapter I'm most looking forward to um doing the fan fiction chapter on they may they may not be the same <laughs> cuz cuz it's two different things one is like someone revealing to you their ideas and the other is like coming up with your own ideas i mean i think that the chapter i'm most looking forward to might be the one we're going to do next which is elaine 2 which is just going to be so much fun <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Uh, next question is, have you abandoned the idea that the comet slash Vulcran sparked the glass candles back to life, along with a lot of the other magic in the world? If John Vance was the cause for this specific candle, that implies other magical reawakenings also have their own separate individual causes. What then hmm. was the comet, aside from a Vulcran, of course? Uh, I, have, I don't think we've, we've, we've abandoned that idea. Um, it's just uh, we, um, you know... We're, we're keeping it ambiguous for now, mm. but I think um, I think the idea is even if it were the comet, it's not going to be the comet by itself that just like turns on the glass candle. I mean, I think it would be the idea is that if the comet were a Vulcran and enhanced people's telepathic abilities, and then they use those telepathic abilities to turn on the glass candle, I think that would be that extra step rather than just the comet turning on glass candles. Um, that that it's more like the comet causing people's telepathic abilities to be enhanced and then they're able to use those telepathic abilities to turn on the glass candle um i mean you know in case 
even though it's ambiguous in the, in the in the chapter, like I think it's more that John turns the glass candle on with his with his telepathic abilities mm -hmm. rather than um, with with the lemon battery. Uh, you know so the lemon battery is 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 the is the red herring distraction that fools that fools john um but but it's you know he's it's more that he's he's turning it on with his with his telepathy and so when we talk about like the the other glass candle that might be on which is which is um i mean there might be two other glass candles on you know obviously quaith is using one and then urathon nightwalker's glass candle is on we're not sure if those two glass can if, if those two glass candles are one and the same. There might just be one glass candle, and that it was it was Quaith that used Earth on Nightwalker's glass candle. So uh, we'll see. But you know, at some point, you know, we, you know, we have to we have to figure out when we when we do the, the Daenerys two chapter in Karth exactly what happened in, on that front. Daenerys is going to Karth. Uh, I think you've said this uh, publicly before. You're not going to yeah. have her go towards um a shy i think she has far too many thi like if if i were daenerys and i was in the situation i was in where i finally have a dragon and i can go wherever i want and i want answers i would go find quaith like that's just what i would do um and so i think that's the situation and mm -hmm. so you know i'd want to go see quaith and uh, get some answers from 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 her. Uh, next question here is your reference to Lazy Leo is interesting in a chapter so focused on Sorella. You've said in the past that Lazy Leo's unclear and fluctuating significance to Marwyn has confused you. Is his watching mm. of John a sign that he knows more than he seems, or is he just has or, or is his minor role a sign that you are erring on the side of Leo remaining unimportant to Marwyn? Um, I am. I it was. It was mainly just on, in the sense that when we first hear about the glass candle, we hear about it from Lazy Leo. So Lazy Leo is the one that kind of tells everybody that, oh, there's a glass candle burning in Marwyn's um, chambers, which means Lazy Leo is like, he's, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities, like maybe Lazy Leo like does know about Marwyn, or maybe he's just like creepily spying on everyone being a dickhead. And, I, and so I kind of just had like it as as a a as a the sneer was supposed to signal i know what fucking went on like i know about this glass candle shit and then later when he tells people that there's a glass candle burning in, in maester marwin's like chambers like it's it's because lazy leo is like keeping an eye out on everything that was going around um and so that was kind of that was that was the the message i was kind of trying to have there in a very subtle sense that that lazy leo lazy leo knew what john what john had done and 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 the, the deal with the glass candle and was sneering at him you know so um but yeah like lazy leo's role going forward uh, yeah it's a big mystery we have to we have, we have to figure it out when we get to the john the, the um the sam chapter lazy leo is a is a big puzzle he's still a puzzle in my mind i don't i don't know uh where to go for it, what to do with him going forward. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But it was mainly just like the signal, like I was watching, I know about the glass candle. You know, that, that was the message he was, he was sending. Plus I just, I wanted everybody to have a cameo. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, I, th I threw in Robert Frey too, um, you know, in there, cause he's never been mentioned before. So I threw Robert Frey at, at the, uh, at the Quill and Tankard. But, um, by the way, you mentioned, um, I have to ask, uh, you mentioned Elaine 2. For those of you mm. who forgot, George did release an Elaine 1, like, how many years ago was this now? 2015? It's, it's getting, it's getting far. 2016. Right? Um, and uh, my question to you is, you're not going to fuck with the chapters that, I think you've answered this already, you're not going to fuck with the chapters that have already been out, like Mercy and Elaine and... Yeah, no, the sample the sample chapters are, are, are fucking canon right now, yeah. Okay, are you even, going even though, to... Even though George himself, even though George himself says that he reserves the right to go change them, and he does change sample chapters somewhat. Um, Elaine's sample chapter was, was, was made in 2015, April 2nd, 2015, so uh, seven, over seven years ago. Jesus Christ. Uh are you are you going to read the Elaine one again or make some alterations yourself? 
No, I'm not going to make any alterations to the sample chapters. Mm -hmm. um, I may read them again. Uh, it just so that like when someone has a playlist, they have a consistent like um, voice. But I don't know. You know that, that that's that's a little work. But like I am I am like figuring out the order right now of of chapters um, in my mind, like how I would have Winds of Winter, and I think prologue and then i think a lane one would be the first chapter i would have um and then i would go probably arian one and then um or hota maybe it would be a lane hota arian one um and then you know maybe a lane a lane two would be like the, the next chapter but i'd have to because like a lane one and two both happened before like the the first day of winter you kind of have to have a lane one be like really really early so i think a lane one would be like the first chapter um after after the prologue uh and so but yeah i i, I might do a reading of it I'll, I'll also look back maybe my prepping for winter i can take the my my audio from from that if, if it if it reads right i'm not sure but um but I, i'm not going to change any any anything in the sample chapters in fact, even the Victorian sample chapter, which is is only a partial of that chapter, I think I might just end it there. Like, you know, that'd be the end of the Victorian chapter. Rather than, even though there there is a summary, a, a small summary of what Victorian does later, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't plan on changing the sample chapters. That's canon. Gotcha. Uh, next question. Is it your intent that the Westerling Spicers die on the same night as Kevin uh, due to both events happening with the arrival of the White Raven or slightly after? The Citadel could release more distantly destined Ravens before more locally distanced ones or release them all at once. Which is your preference? Um, I, I, I thought about that. Like, is it the same day or is it just the day that the Raven happens to arrive? Because, you know, maybe this Raven... Um, made it to the crag the day before uh, King's Landing, maybe arrived the day after, you know, but I don't think it necessarily matters. Um, and I, 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 I think I would want it to be ambiguous anyway, but what's, what's interesting about the, um, about it, and this is really subtle uh, in the, in the, in the sample chapter. Uh, I mean, not in the sample chapter, in the prologue. Um, so one of the things that was evolving around was, was how many days, autumn lasted and i sort of like picked a day that was like picked a number that was fairly close to um what would work roughly you know with that a song of ice and fire timeline that's online it's not exact but like to that but it's in that ballpark i, I picked a number and then as a joke i had um maester amory have a completely different number because he's an idiot like it was, it was just a throwaway <laughs> joke that like Maester John like knows autumn was this many days, and that Maester Amory is like off because he's a because he's a fucking because he's fucking stupid, and then I I got some some of the editors were like come on like like counting the number of days isn't that like hard like you can't make Maester Amory that big of an idiot and I was like okay you know they're they're kind of right on that, but then I then I started thinking wait a minute. The first day of winter for John, I mean, the first day of autumn for John in Old Town is a different day than Maester Amory. And then Maester, then John would go to the crag and they would experience the same, the same day. So their days should be different. And so if you actually read in the prologue, Maester John's number is two days um, more than Maester Amory's. Uh, count because John is counting when the first day of autumn began in Old Town and then the first day of winter in the crag while while Amory is the first day of autumn in the crag and the first day of winter in the crag so there's a two day disparity between John and Amory based on where they are yeah but um but yeah I was thinking about this sort of stuff but I you know if it's it's probably the same day, but it doesn't matter if it's the next day or the day before or whatever. Ravens are ravens. They're, ravens are going to raven, right? Like, <laughs> like if a raven stops 
and and like decides to get food, you know, for a day before like continuing its mission, it's going to fucking do that, right? So, you know, ravens are going to raven. Um, but yeah, they're they're within it's within a few days of each other or it's it's either the same day or the day before or the day after, but it, it doesn't quite matter, but you know, cuz first day of winter is going to be if if a raven arriving is your first day of winter then everybody's going to have a different first day of winter just like before universal clocks everybody's noon was a little different you know and and trains arriving and and at different times was was mushy you know things like that so that's what it's all about um i don't know does that answer the question uh it's gonna have to do (laughs) (laughs) it's gonna have to do yeah, it's uh, the the answer is it's not firm, but they're around the same time, you know. But but keep in mind, like I we we like we were thinking about the days and and everything. And if if you did notice that there's a two day disparity between John and Amory, like there's a reason for that, you know. So uh, next question is uh, the prologue has often served as an introduction to various plots as well as an introduction mm. to a location beyond the wall is always relevant but dragonstone and old town are both crucial locations first viewed via prologue the westerlands mm. is perhaps the least explored of the seven kingdoms less so even than dorne and the vale does this prologue indicate that it too will be explored oh yeah i mean definitely when 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 we were thinking about um all of the the different themes that are going to happen in the winds of winter um uh s- like so many things are, are are established here so yes like one the white ravens are going to be a big thing going forward like there's going to be more white ravens like and old town is going to be is going to take center stage going forward um and and you know exploration there additionally karth like karth is going to be an important thing going forward um and the like why the westerlings and spicers died is going to be a plot going forward and their and like the marriage of elena lena westerling and you know relating to the ironborn is important going forward so like all of these themes are are definitely important going forward we're, we're definitely going to you know there's definitely going to be more focus on the westerlings um but but at the same time we don't have any characters uh, in the Westerlands, so it's going to be hard, yeah. you know. So in that sense, it's going to be difficult. But West, the Westerlin houses are definitely going to be um, more important. Um, well, let me ask you this real quick, because once again, I weep as I say this. We're probably not getting Dream of Spring, um, and when you eventually go into Dream of Spring, you know, when you're 16. Mm. That's <laughs> gonna take you a long time sure. to get there. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to have us explore the Westerlands more in detail as the war between Daenerys and whoever's on the Iron Throne at that point um, picks up. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Westerland houses are going to be talked a lot uh, um, more in the future. Uh, talked about a lot more in the future, and I think that I do think that we're you know, in my mind, like rather late in the, uh, in the book, um, we would, we would have characters move into the Westerlands. Um, Jamie, I'm assuming. Uh, uh, or Cersei, Mm. you know, she has to flee somewhere if she's going to lose that throne, you know, so maybe, you know, it could be Jamie, could, could be, could be Jamie, Brienne, Cersei, that kind of stuff. So, um, Trying to think of anybody else would be, I mean, you know, Aaron could could possibly go back up there. Um, that kind of, you know, Stannis other maybe. Like that. Right, but he doesn't have a POV, so we'd have to have like, would it be Asha? You know, like, what, you know, how 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 would it how would it happen? So, are you are you implying um, that Stannis survives this encounter with the Boltons? Well, for now, I think Stannis is going to survive. Um, but I, I, you know, but you're a gardener; we'll, everything we'll changes as yeah. you. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how things go. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to get some some light on the Westerlands, but it's gonna be difficult. You know, we got to get characters there to 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 have eyes on it first. Uh, next question here is: You gave us many parallels between the two Johns, the strange relationship, uh, strange relationship with his family, interest in the seasons, membership in an all male celibate order of service, to the point where even the White Raven got them confused. And mm. as such, some of us have have to ask. 
is John Vance's love of Sorella foreshadowing of Jon Snow's love of satin. <laughs> uh, I did not think about uh, John's love of satin. Um, yeah, what what when 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 uh, <laughs> thinking of John Vance, John. I mean, John Vance like was just kind of. Um, it was very very fortunate to just have to have John Vance um, like work as a as a character because it was really like sitting in a situation where I I, I knew that because it had the the chapter had to have Jane Westerling and um, I knew it was an opportunity to talk about Old Town and there's just so few opportunities to talk about Old Town um, that I would that I would have to like go forward with that plus like you know. Crescent and Pate being being the perspectives of book two and four, like just got in my mind that it was going to be a maester. So I wanted to have if you're going to have a maester, let's explore Old Town. What's the best way to explore Old Town? Have it be a new young maester who used to be at the Citadel and is now in the field so that we can talk about both locations. And then looking through the appendices and finding that the only maester that's young that's never been used is Maester John. And then everything kind of falls into place. You're like, oh, crap, his name's John. There's so many, like, cool, confusing things we can do with that. You know, we can have him uh, look at, we can have him, we can have the fake out at the beginning. We can have the, the raven be confused, like, things like that. But um, so it, it, was, it was fun in that, in that sense, you know, that it's just, it was a lucky, lucky coincidence that the only John that really fit the right age to be a new maester was named John Vance. Was named John. So that that was that was just fortunate. But I was not thinking about satin. But uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see about satin going forward. Uh, sat, I think you know. I feel like satin satin should live, and uh, be a, be a good character. <laughs> I don't know about Jon Snow, but we'll see. We'll see about satin. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, so, uh, so far that's all I have here, and plus some of the, uh, extra stuff I, I asked you. Um, so the next chapter is Elaine 2, yeah? Yeah, yes, yes. My the boy Littlefinger. Nice. Right, I know you hate Littlefinger. How dare you, I love, you, you, I love You'd it. wish him to be cut, like, how would you feel if, like, within, like, a paragraph, like, the first paragraph is just, like, Littlefinger having a heart attack in his sleep and just dying? <laughs> I still maintain, I know you, you and Destiny spoke about the show a little yeah. bit, and uh, I still maintain the best, I hated his death, his death was fucking mm. trash, and I think you and Destiny discussed that, that as well. Yeah. Um, I would have had, I've always wanted to do my own, like, what if, like, how I would have done, you know, the show, um, of course, because you'll do the book, uh, and uh, the way I would have had Littlefinger, I've said this before, I'll say it again, the way I would have had Littlefinger go out is not by death, is that they exile him from the north. And if you've seen a map of the north and where Winterfell is in the north, it's like all straight right in the center where Winterfell is. So I would have Sansa in the show exile his ass out of the north. No horse, no supplies. He yeah. just has to walk out while it's snowing, and that's <clears> it. <throat> he walks out into the distance. You never see him again. I would have I would have it like that because I want it to be in the back of like the viewer or the reader's mind. That, yeah, this asshole has to walk. He's totally dead. Right. Or, but but there could be a chance he somehow chance. makes it. And I like I like endings like that. I like it when it's up to interpretation. That's very George R. Martin. Like, have it be. Look, there's a 99 percent chance that he's dead. But you know, like it's very very George R. Martin. That's how Dying of the Light ends, right? Like, um, the protagonist go, go, like decides to fight. Uh, in this battle against this guy that's clearly just going to kill him. But it cuts off before the ending, so you never know. Right, 99% chance, but it's the same. Um, it's also how he ends uh, Men of Greywater Station. Like, the protagonist is, like, clearly dead on this planet. There's, like, no hope. Um, but it cuts off before he dies, so you're like, yeah, may maybe... Probably not, but George R. R. Martin does that a lot. Does it a lot. So no, no, that maybe that would be kind of good. 
like to set it, set him off into the snow. There are some characters that like I want to see the definitive end for them, like Cersei and uh, I guess you know Dark Star. Like th- those those are threads that you have to cut loose. Um, yeah. But with Littlefinger, he's been such an integral part of the story and like you know behind a lot of major events that he could still be out there and he could still cause trouble going forward into the future. You just don't know, but we need him to leave the story for right now. That's how I would have done yeah, it in yeah. the show. Um, hopefully you guys do it in the, uh, in the, uh, you know, little finger stuff going forward. Um, I'm assuming if you do get to dream of spring, will he be in that? Yeah. Yeah. I think little finger would be, would be there until, until the, you know, close to the end. Um, I mean, it depends on like how, uh, I mean, it depends on how important it is that like Sansa um, come into her own. So maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe Littlefinger should be, uh, should be written out earlier. But yeah, it's an interesting. Whoa, whoa calm, everybody just calm down now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would have loved if Sansa in the show, um, Use techniques and teachings and learn from everyone around her who caused her harm, whether it's Littlefinger, Cersei, Lysa. Um, I, not much to learn from Joffrey and Lysa, but Cersei and Littlefinger right. the most. I, I wish she'd learn stuff, and even Ramsay on some level. I wish she'd learn stuff from those guys and put them to use. Like, I had a headcanon yeah. for Sansa in episode four of season eight after, you know, uh, the long night that she was, um, if you notice while everyone's like drinking and having a good time, there are several like serving maids coming in and taking men's arms and like, you know, listening to them. Right. Talk right. Two of, th- two of them going off with, with Podrick. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I, my head can is that those are Sansa's women and she's gathering information. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, no, that would be, that would be much better. Um, that was my head cannon for the show. But, like, I, w- I hope you guys going forward, I want Sansa not to be fucking stupid. I want her to, like, not be naive. And yeah. She's, she's grown, yeah. but I want her to learn. I want I that mean, to you've, be her you've, superpower. You've listened to my fixed, you know, thing. It's, like, of her, like, puzzling things out. The thing is, the show people, they knew that that's what they wanted for Sansa. And she, she it's one of those tell-not-show situations where she's like, oh, I, I think at some point she says, I learned a lot from Cersei. You know, and you're like, oh, really? What did you learn? Show us. What What did you learn? But we're never shown anything, right? Like, she's bailed out by by Bran. And exactly. Then given, and then given the North by Bran. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't do anything in a Cersei respect. They I mean, try Cer- making her seem like a capable leader by telling them, hey, put some fur in this armor. You wow. Okay. You know? Okay, checkbox. Hey, cool. She is she is ready to be queen. Check, you know, wh- right when you actually think about a character as resourceful and ruthless as Cersei, um, you know, and all the things that she did, like, you know, killing Robert, um, you know, planning the blowing up of the sap to like all these different manipulating people, um, you know, that's Cersei did a lot. She was, you know, she, uh, but. Uh, Sansa didn't do any of that. Uh, it's too bad. It's too bad that they wasted Sansa. Well, you guys won't do that. No, no. You guys will do a better job. Oh, by the way, we have some book news from George. He put out a blog today. Did you read it? Really? Yeah, we finally had some book news. You'll be excited. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm looking it up right now. We finally got the book news that uh, the illustration for Fire and Blood is coming soon. So, yay! Oh, right, the paperback. I did see that. The paperback <laughs> for... for uh... oh, thank goodness. Thank, thank goodness. Thank goodness. We were waiting for this. Do you think... I mean... I don't know. Do you, Do you think that, like, this audience that he's writing to exists... No, like like people that are like like anybody that's like oh oh great there's like illustrations cool and then they like go out and buy it. Uh, to the people who are buying this, stop. Just wins the <laughs> winter forever. That's it. That's all you need. That's that's really it. Right. Um, it's just like no. like do you think so, do you think like there's there's some Joe that's sitting there going huh, it's got new tie-in cover art from House of the Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna totally go out and buy that. I'm glad you like, mentioned this. I personally hate when 
there's an adaptation for an already established novel series, mm. and they take pictures from the show and put them like reprint the book and put them on the book. Like, yeah. I don't. My books are fucking old. They don't. They're like the. I think I don't know if they're the original, but they're not like Peter Dinklage is not on the cover of a Game of Thrones. Yeah, my, yeah. Right, and I even right. hate that for The Witcher too. As much as I love The Witcher, they did this with The Witcher where they um, when they released it in English, they had the video game Witcher Two like you know stills from the witcher 2 on the i yeah. even hated that i don't like what they do it i like the original artist's interpretation when it well first comes well out. so definitely those things sell and they sell really well oh, which yeah, is why they do them they, they they love to do tie-in um stuff uh, the, the 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 thing is it makes sense in 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 say you've got a guy walking around barnes and noble you know, and he's like, oh, I need a book today. And he's browsing Barnes and Noble and he sees like, hey, that show that I like, th there's a book over there. And he walks over and he's like, wait, this is like the source material. Oh, I didn't know that. And he like buys it like that's what that's for. Right. I know. Of um, course. Yeah. I just and, and I personally don't like it. Now, now that's great. But I'm just trying to think like if you're fans enough with George R. R. Martin already. Um, you know, would you, would you, would, would his tweet about new cover art for your, for, for fire and blood, like make you want to go out and buy the paperback version? I just don't like, I don't see that. I see the brow, like the browsing person who's, who's a, who's a casual. I can see that like him being like, huh? Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll get that. Why not? You know? But I just don't see somebody that's already a fan of George R. R. Martin like getting this information and going, "Yes, I'm going to go out and buy that that tie-in cover art like book," which, by the way, is horrible because it doesn't show anything from the show. It just says inspiration for House of the Dragon. Hmm. Um, like who hasn't who hasn't heard of House of the Dragon and and doesn't know about Fire and Blood? I'm glad it doesn't show anything from the show because that means the show will probably be doing its own thing and taking liberties with like everything, which is oh, I'm completely you, you, know, you know very well that like later on there'll be some like cover with like Matt da Matt uh, Matt Smith on the cover. You gonna say Matt so Damon? Far. Yeah, I was about to say Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> was, you like just heard it? I didn't even say like a full D. I was like Matt uh, Matt Smith, and you're like you were about to say Matt Damon. I was like the most infamous Matt. Uh, no, no, like, hey, look, as long as, I like it that they keep it separate. That, that's my, I, I like it, I like Ice and Fire being its own multiverse and the show being its own thing. That's, I've always, I've always liked that. It's, you know, two different things. I like it kept separate, but I, personally speaking, I hate, I like, I like, like, arty, arts, artsy book covers. I don't like when they just take, like, a fucking Google image still and, bam, place it on there. Like, it's a YouTube yeah, thumbnail. Yeah. I'm like, mm, I'm not a fan of that. But, um... Uh, my 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 first game of a uh, game of thrones has has Sean Bean on the front. Oh yeah, that one. I, it's either Sean Bean or Peter Dinklage. Those are like the two fan favorites for like the. Yeah. But um, Preston, do you mind if we wrap it up here? Or do you Sounds have anything? Good. Do you Sounds have anything good. else to add to? Uh, no, 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 you don't want the fans good. to know. Um, I mean, I'll just keep giving things away. I'll be like I'll be like George, <laughs> just giving it all away. But no, we're 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 we're, we're fine. Um, that was good. I'll be honest, and I'm not saying this to blow smoke up your ass. I'm actually looking forward to what you guys can cook up for Elaine too, because it is going to be like the tournament, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's going to be, be so much fun. It's going to be the be, tournament. It's going to be the most fun chapter. Uh, you know, Sansa. Sansa's. I love her in the Vale. My favorite character, Littlefinger. I love characters who you know they're always scheming, always moving chess pieces around. Uh, your your favorite character, Sweet Robin. He's coming up as well. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. absolutely so yeah uh can't wait for that one guys thank you so much for watching as always we will see you all next time have a good one